Welcome back, True Believers. This is Rektar, and today I'm going to be playing some Tokyo Jungle as the Zebra. I am just jumping right in today because I'm not, like, doing votes or anything, and I don't really need to, like, explain what animals I'm playing as. So let's look. We're going to find the buffalo boss. We simply have to touch him, which is kind of dirty. And... what? And... We have to completed four challenges, and we have to change to generations over two times. And look at the mark six times. Head for Dog and Zaka. All right. Oh, defeat animals in the next ten years. Tasty. We can start practicing for that right now by killing Mr. Beagle right here because you know what? He's in my way. That's you know what, Mr. Beagle. You're in my way. And I don't appreciate it. Dude. Is not as is the zebra is not as fast a stealth eater as the horse. Seriously, I can't get over there just how Dude, the zebra makes interesting noises. I cannot get over just how quickly of a stealth eater the um the horse was. Like Holy! I never knew what kinds of sounds a zebra make. I'm going to assume that this is accurate, and it's just blowing my mind right now. Seriously though, nothing will ever be as cool in terms of stealth eating as the horse. I will try stealth eating as every animal, in hopes of the goodness happening. Oh, please say that mark counts towards my challenges. It did! Beautiful, that's actually what I intended, because then I can then... Mark up Dog and Zaka. I gotta watch out for deadly beasts. I'm not gonna lie, I might not be the damnedest of fine players today or the best of speakers because I'm a little loopy right now. I'm. I got the crazy eye. I didn't, like, if you could see my eye right now, you'd be like, oh my gosh, Rat does get the crazy eye. And the reason I got the crazy eye is because this. Is that. Oh, this is an average mate, and I am but a lowly, a lowly rookie. But anyways, the reason that good old Raktar has got the crazy eye today is because it is that week. It is, it's like the week. It is the hump for retail, uh, for workers. Like, once you get over the hump, the rest of the year is going to be busy, but it, it, it like it's like a steady kind of predictable busy, like you know you get a lot of toys because people want to buy toys for their young kids for Christmas presents. You get a reasonable amount of electronics and all that stuff. But oh, that's desperate. Oh man, nah, there's no way, no way am I gonna sleep with that hussy. But anyway, but anyways, so it is just such such a busy week. And, because, like, today, we took two trucks at Target, instead of the usual one truck that we take on most days. And, it was just bizarre. I ended up staying at work for 12 hours. So I was there from 2 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon, and you're like, Rakdar, you are not a math, because that is without the doubts. You're like, Rakdar, that is... Most assuredly, 16, or, <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so loopy and tired, 13 hours, you're like, Rektar, but it seems as though it is 13 hours, but, oh no, oh no, <laughs> but you have to account for the fact that, um, there's two, I take two 30 unpaid minute lunch breaks, oh dude, this G Retriever and this Beagle, oh what the, I had the red, this, and this G Retriever is like, messing with this monk E. And it's, or this chicken stuffs. Oh, dude, the beagle, the most vicious animal in the game, is gonna get me if I don't careful. But anyways, on that note, I think I already mentioned this in a previous video. But so, because of the hump, uh, this week might be scarce for videos, so... I don't know how many of my Okami fans... Oh, no! What the... F I did one-shot that crocodile, that was scary! That crocodile tried to jump out of the bush. What is eating? Is something eating the crocodile right now? Whatever. I don't even know what's happening. Oh yeah, but 
I was back to me talking about the hump. Why is it the hump? Well, it's because during this one week we have like we get we take all of our stock, all of our inventory for Black Friday. Oh, what? Eat the damn bush, you stupid chump! But anyways, yeah, during this one week we take all of our inventory for Black Friday, and let me tell you, that is a very large portion of inventory. Please be an average mate. <gasps> Dude, I'm a lucky ducky, but I'm actually a zebra. But yeah, so we take just so much, so much stock, and it makes you work 12 hour days. But it's okay, because you know what? Like I said, once you get over the hump, the rest of the year is like predictably busy, but this week is just like so intense. It's so intense. It's like, oh my gosh, you know what saying so intense reminds me of? This is kind of actually an older... I feel like it's an older internet meme now. Um, are you guys familiar with <laughs> the video? And the reason I feel like it's an older video, like it's not that old, but... We were watching it... Dude, I gotta go back to Shibuya Station. That's where all the food's at. We were watching this video, um... Like... I think like four years ago. No way. It is like four years old. I mean, that's not older, but... It's like old, you know? It's not like a new video. Anyways, back to what I was talking about. So, so intense. When I said so intense, it reminded me of... Double Rainbow. <laughs> Which, I don't know if you watched that video, I don't know if, like, people still think it's funny. I don't- I haven't, like, watched it in a long time, but I remember at work, this- there's this Italian restaurant I used to work at. Um, basically, one of us would start singing Double Rainbow, and it was pretty much the end of everything. Just, like, everybody would just, like, jump in and just all start being like, Double Rainbow all the way across the sky! And just, like, everybody would jump in on that shit, and, um... We worked in a kitchen, and it was funny, because the kitchen was, um... It was like an open sort of a kitchen. Where, you know, like, the customers could see. And so when we, like, would burst into song and shit, uh... Some customers were like, Why are the cooks in your restaurant the most annoying pieces of shit ever? And some customers would be like, Your cooks are awesome. And for that purpose, we had a cook tip bucket. And the cooks sometimes... We raked in the tips, like... I mean, we didn't rake it in, there was four cooks, you split the tips four ways. But by the end of the night, you know, you had enough money to go grab a Chipotle burrito... Um, the next day during school. Well, I mean, like, college, because there's Chipotle right on campus, and so, you know, it would be like, Oh, you get six bucks, you go grab Chipotle. If the stuff... By the way, Chipotle, I'm gonna talk about... Chipotle Burritos. I don't know why I'm gonna talk about Chipotle. I'm just like, like I said, I'm all loopy and tired after work. I'm just thinking about everything right now. It's not like, you know when you just like, crazy, you got the crazy eye, you know what I've I said earlier, you got the crazy eye. You're not thinking about anything, you're thinking about just everything. So anyways, Chipotle, Chipotle Burritos. So, I don't know how many of my viewers are possibly from Colorado. But, um, Chipotle burritos are like a Colorado thing. I think it's owned by like a major corporation. But for some, oh my gosh, I'm just getting lucky with these average mates. But for some reason, Chipotle burritos only took off really in, um, in Colorado. Well, I mean, it's, it's where they started. I don't know why. Maybe it's because that's just where the business started. But, anyways, I was like, uh, what Chipotle is, is like Qdoba, but it's in Colorado. Colorado actually has some other- it's weird, like, Colorado has a bunch of places that sprouted up that are actually local chains that are like, um, that are like different versions of Qdoba, but better. Like, one of them is a Colorado-only chain called Big City Burrito. One of them is a Colorado-only chain called, um, Illegal Pete's. But Illegal Pete's is cool because they have live music and serve alcohol, so Illegal Pete's is a pretty cool place. A lot of my friends' bands have played there. But anyways, what, how close am I to my next... Dude, I'm like rocking it. I just need to... 
Oh, dude, I should have saved the generation chain. It doesn't matter. I should head for Yama. I could head for Yamanote Line East. Where's the food at? Where the food at? I like ate. Okay, so I ate all the food in Shibuya Station. You know, I could just stick in Shibuya Shop District. There's plenty of food here. And you know what else? There's plenty of sheep for me to kill once the next 10 years comes around and I gotta defeat 15 animals. But of course, I gotta sneak still because I'm worried about running into them meaty eaters. The meat eaters that could kill me, not these sheep. These sheep are basically gonna be my victims. Like, I should pre-apologize to them and just be like, Hey sheep, I wanna apologize now because in two years game time, I'm gonna come back and kill you all. I'm gonna come back and just be... It's... It's funny because... You know, that, that could go with the storyline. I was trying to think of, like, a storyline reason, like... Because whenever I'm playing this, I try and think of, like, what the animal's doing as kind of, like, having a storyline. And I was like, what storyline reason would a zebra have for killing off these other animals? I mean, like, it's a zebra. It doesn't have... It doesn't need to kill off the other animals, but then I was like, dude... In the storyline, maybe the zebra would kill off the other animals because it doesn't want them. Oh no! Ooh, the beagle is gonna call more bagels, and the beagle bagel is gonna rock my ragel. Except for I killed them all. Damn it! I could have saved those kills for a year and some change from now. But anyways, yeah, it's like the zebra feels threatened by. Oh my gosh! This is. Oh, it looks like this is gonna be beagle territory. But maybe the zebra feels threatened by the fact that these other animals are trying to get all up in his business and try and steal food that could potentially be eaten by him or her. There, are, obviously, there's male and female zebras be eaten by him or her, and he just he feels the need to protect his pack. And what is that? A golden? Yep, that's a tree of and now it's a dead golden retriever, dude. Something is just. I've said it so many times in this game, always something will feel weird about, like, killing pets that are widely regarded as, like, house pets. Like, just the idea of, like, a zebra going after a golden retriever for, like, no reason. Oh, <gasps> it's a dairy cow. It won't fuck with me. Oh, dude, and it's daytimes now. Oh, if I- okay, check, check it out. We're gonna wait for this one year mark to pass, and then right- oh no, that- that terrier's gonna turn around. Oh, okay, okay. Oh my gosh. And there's one out of 15. I feel so bad for these little house pets because like realistically, oh no, oh no, it's, it's running for me because I've got a pack of zebra with me that it obviously doesn't want to mess with, but it was stupid enough to run into this lamp post. Like, yeah, it like got itself stuck on this lamp post. So I don't think it really, it wasn't smart enough to live anyways, you know what I mean? Like, the zebra obviously doesn't have the same survival instinct as me. I wonder if this dairy cow could kick my ass. Nope. I guess the zebra's got actually pretty good attack. It's it's also got really good speed, too. Oh, and here's all these sheep that I was thinking about pre-apologizing to. Oh my gosh, they're just gonna run away. But this sheep isn't gonna- Oh my gosh, no, it knows. It knows that I'm- Oh, maybe it's running from the retriever. Damn it, this present is getting in the way of my sheep killing. Oh dude, by out of habit, I did it again. You know how a lot of the time I'm on the meat uh, I'm on a a predator and out of habit I'll like stand next to a plant and you'll probably be like, Ractar, why are you standing next to that? Ractar, why are you standing next to that plant? Also this golden retriever is gonna try and sneak. You'd be like, Ractar, why are you why are you standing next to that plant? And the answer would, of course, be, oh, it's because out of habit, I was gonna try and eat it without thinking about it. Well, I almost just did that. Dude, this sheep does is like, it's so sad because as a fellow grazer, that sheep is totally just like, oh, this guy's not gonna mess with me. Like, I gotta say, I feel a little bit guilty. Like, what is, oh, this cow, oh, this cow wants to fuck, fuck shit up though. It's gonna charge me. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh no! Dude, this cow is not afraid! It does not fear death, it does- Oh my gosh, it's gonna kill off my fellow zebras if I don't show it the biz! Oh. Dude! I may be able to one-shot cows, but cows are definitely not- Not afraid of old Mr. Zebra. Holy shit! 
That was a master encounter by that cow. Oh, oh, that pig is in, in a place where I literally, I can't reach it. We're just gonna have to kill this one. Sorry, buddy. Dude, it's like, I'm not sorry. I'm just an animal. Oh, dude, this pig's brave. That pig wanted to fuck with me, but I was just like, nah. Nah, sir. I am a zebra. I'm the king of the... <laughs> dude, zebra is, in my opinion, is the new king of the jungle. Like, seriously, we should take a vote on it. Like, who's the king of the jungle? Lion or zebra? And I would probably be like, dude, I've got a feeling it's zebra. How did I pass up that mate earlier? Oh, it's... I didn't even walk... Okay. You know how I passed it up? I didn't walk past it because I'm being tired and loopy and stupid right now. But I guess I'll just go check on this other mate. And I'll see what this mate is. And you know what? It's okay because there's grasses... There's grasses for me to eat over here. What are my other challenges? Change generations. Oh, and head for Yamanote. There's no way I'm gonna make it to Yamanote Line East in five. Oh, it's a desperate mate. Ugh. Whatever. Oh, desperate mate. I'm doing it. Gotta get a challenge done here, okay? Don't judge me, people. Sometimes you do what you gotta do. What is? It? Oh, dude, this sheep is gonna brave. Oh, oh, it's because they've got like a pack of sheep. Oh, oh, dude, I ain't scared. I ain't scared no sheep. Okay, let's just let's just make this clear right now. I ain't scared. I ain't scared no sheep. All right, where is Buffalo Boss? Buffalo Boss is in Shibuya Woods. Intriguing. All right, well, I already made the mistake of getting this desperate mate with me. Why won't it... Oh, you know why? Because... Is this horse coming after me? Oh, no, it's a zebra following me. I was like, why won't it let me mate? And it's because there's... These sheeps are now my enemy. I gotta not say sheeps. It sounds stupid. I'd say sheep. Because, obviously... Sheep is one of those words. There's a word for those types of words. Um... Oh, my gosh. That was a horrible place for that dairy. Dude, now I don't even I don't even have a challenge to defeat animals. I've just got like a taste for blood now. I'm such a bad animal. Oh yeah, but sheep is one of those words where um conceptually one sheep is the same word as many sheep. You know what's it's funny, so I studied this is this is about to tell a really stupid story that is really pointless, like, but I'm just gonna like muse on something every second. So I studied philosophy in college. And I always think about stupid, weird stuff, like, the concept that, of, like, um, you know, when people, when they try and think of, like, what everything is, uh, philosophers in the Greek, like, Greek philosophers used to try and assign one word to it, and it'd be like, air, or water. They'd be like, everything is one type of atom, and that atom is water. And they would try and argue this, and so the point is, um, they would try and use words that meant the body as a whole is um, like all the pieces are also the body as a whole so like if you have a little bit of water you have water and if you have a lot of water you still just have water um, so I always like to think of like sheep as like um, if you just have a bunch of sheep it's like a glass of sheep like oh dude I could sure go for a glass of deer right now <laughs> and I don't know it's just for me it's not that funny, but it was always, like, conceptually, I just like saying things like, I could sure go for a glass of deer right now, but it wouldn't work with zebras, because I think the plural of zebra is definitely zebras, but the plural of deer is definitely deer, because if I said deers, I would just sound like an idiot, just like, oh, dude, I gotta take out this wolf, if I don't, it's, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and by dog eat dog, I mean zebra kick wolf and just leave his body for crows or possibly other animals. I feel like most of the food in this game, what happens to it is, um, if you leave it a lot of times, I never, you never see me like waiting around, but, um, one interesting thing that I think is like, it's a cool little touch. And I've said in this game before that it's all the little touches that make me love this game. But, um, one interesting little touch is that if you just leave food, whoa, oh no, oh no. Oh, dude, there's multiple dog pack calling hyenas around here. But one interesting touch in this game that I really like is that if you just leave food, like, cr 
crows and ravens, well not ravens I guess, but crows for sure, will like come and they will, uh, oh they did it again. They put food up on this place that, that, um, I can't get to, I think. Like I think, um, yeah, these larger animals are unable to get to this spot possibly, well, no way, I can get there. Oh no, see, I, I already decided this, I can't get to that spot as a larger animal. The game just will not allow you, which is unfortunate because I need food. Oh. Alright, we gotta sneak up on this hyena. I don't want to mess with him. Oh crap! Oh! Dude, that hyena turned around at a really unfortunate time. I don't blame my lack of skill on that. I blame that hyena's... Um... Abundance of lucky turning around. For what just happened, okay? I know you're probably like, Ragdar, you suck. You got seen by that hy you done You done been seen by that hyena. But I would like to set the record straight. That hyena just got lucky and turned around at just the right time. I'm so good at sneaking. I'm actually really not. In fact, I feel like one of the crowning, like, uh, like one of the shining parts. Oh, man, this is dumb. That other hyena is gonna alert this first hyena. Like, I was gonna sneak it. Oh, my God. Okay. I don't think bigger- yeah, bigger animals can't, like, hide in the grass very well. I always think it's funny, just like, this huge animal just kind of being like, I'm hiding in the grass, you can't see- Oh, this is perfect timing now. We'll get one hyena, we'll have to take the other one out the old-fashioned way. Hopefully it's not- oh, it is a pack collar, but we got it. Dude, I feel like hyenas are more often, like, pack collars than a lot of the other, um, animals. And I don't know why, it just seems like- that is a common theme in this game, it's just that hyenas like to be... They, ooh, they, they, they... Oh crap, I went after the pig, I didn't mean to. Oh dude, this hyena is gonna call... I'm having trouble attacking right now. That hyena called other hyenas. Oh crap. Sacrifice, sacrifice a zebra. I sacked a zebra because you know what I'm gonna do? Oh my gosh. Wait, what happened to my sacked zebra? This is bad. I gotta get to this. I gotta get to this buffalo boss and touch him right now. Oh my gosh, you know what? I'm doing it right now, just for the hell of it. I'm just gonna be like, Goodbye, cruel world. This has been Rekta. Thank you for watching.